Hey, what's up, guys? Tookie here, back again with another episode of my Buffalo Bills franchise mode series right here on Madden 19. You know the deal. We are in the middle of the 2022 season currently with a 7-2 record. Things are looking very good for us in terms of the playoff race. But we do have an interesting schedule down the stretch, including this first game against the Jets, the 2-6-1 Jets. So you'd like to think this would be a win, but then again, if all went according to plan, we'd be 9-0. and Now, of course, the last episode was highlighted by the trade for Marshawn Lattimore, of course, brought on by the uh, broken down negotiations. We end up making the move for him, somehow pulling that off. And when you look at this defense, just this fairly stacked defense, fingers crossed this ends up being a strong season for us. We really don't have much else to say, much else to recap, much else to hype up. We have an 11-point advantage on the Jets. Let's get down to business. I want to get to a lot of games. Preferably, I'd like to end the regular season in this episode. So, some straightforward games. No controversy. Easy wins. That would be tremendous. But we'll see what happens on that front. Of course, in general, this is our best chance. We've made the playoffs twice now. This is the time where we are absolutely favorites, I would say. We don't have the best record in the league, but in terms of a true contender, we are up there. It's just whether or not we solidify that fact over the next few weeks. The last time we were here uh, in, I mean, we'll just call it New York, it's not, but the last time we were on the road here against the Jets, it didn't go all that well. I'm intrigued to see how we do today, and we give up a touchdown pass, I would assume, to the Jets. It's 10 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Case in point, this is just, this is not the place for us. This place is cursed in terms of us finding success. We do get on the board. Fortunately, they answer back. 13-10 at halftime. So we at least get on the board, which is promising, but not much really happening. An 8-yard touchdown pass to Leilon Kuangio, because... Of course, that's what he does, and we would have ended up with a field goal as well. Might as well see how far of a field goal it was. 42 yards for Jake Elliott. Let's go through the third, see if we can get a bit of momentum here. 20-10 to 10 for the Jets, and that is the score as we begin the fourth quarter. The offense not exactly off to a flying start. We've had some late comebacks before. We might be able to score here, and we do. So I knew we had good field position to start. It was a one-yard rushing touchdown for Kareem Hunt. So 2017, we have basically the entirety of the fourth quarter to go. We force a three and out to start things off. So we have a chance right here to have another very strong point swing. Unfortunately, we can't take advantage of it. Sanchez with the 57-yard punt. It wouldn't have been the first time this season that we've had that fourth quarter point swing. Let's go ahead and Sim Tredavious White with the interception. We take over at the New York 12, and that should give us the opportunity to take the lead. There we go. Tredavious White, talk about this defense. 15-yard touchdown pass for Eric Ebron, 24-20 with 9.09 remaining. But the Jets march downfield to take the lead, 27-24. Capped off with a four-yard rushing touchdown for Kenyon Drake. And with five and a half to go, we find ourselves trailing. I don't know what it is about the Jets, man. They always give us trouble. A three and out. Sanchez forced to punt. 73 yards. Pins them back to the 11. But we need a quick defensive stop here. And we can't get it. The Jets wind down the clock, and that's it. I don't know what it is about MetLife. But we just cannot get the job done here. We start off this episode with a loss, 27-24. to 24. It's a Jets victory, and that is incredibly disappointing. Hanson Erickson was 18 of 27, 226 yards and two touchdowns. Rushing-wise, not a great game from Kareem Hunt, despite the touchdown. Receiving-wise, I mean, Hunt did have a good game receiving. Of course, Kawanjo and Ebron, only one reception for Ebron, but it was a touchdown. Uh, the offensive line was okay, not amazing. Defensively as well, Cordell Turner was in at corner in this game. Led the way with 11 tackles. I imagine he saw a lot of the... Uh, he, he had to have been the main focus, basically. We got to the quarterback a few times. The interception for Tredavious White. Although now I am worried about Lattimore. Be, or, I mean, no. Eh. 
It's tough to say if we're going to be dealing with an injury here, but I can't help but think. Now, Clayton Malone does have an upgrade point, which is very promising. He's turned into a marvelous defensive lineman. Again, at 22, he is going to be a beast. Power and finesse moves going up would certainly help. So let's uh, let's make him better as a speed rusher. And he goes up two overall points to an 86. Jesus. Oh, my God. Clayton Malone, a superstar in the making. Are we dealing with an injury at corner? It doesn't look like it, but we do fall to 7-3. and three. Such a disappointing loss. A very disappointing loss as we get ready for our Week 12 matchup against the Lions. Uh, Denard Kiaho gets his first, uh, I believe, his first point improvement on the year. Let's make him better as a run stopper. It's a better scheme fit, of course. We still run, we're still going with the 4-6 for the sake of having it match up with the majority of our guys and having that you know, hopefully result in more upgrade points. I don't know who this is that's looking to negotiate. I don't recall. It was Michael Dieter. Okay. And, of course, there's guys like Vaughn Key, Denard Buckley. We're still looking okay heading into the re-sign phase. Dieter, actually, let me go back here. Contract length, okay. So he wants a little bit more money across the board. And let's not uh, let's not dick around. Let's go to about a $5 million offer, which is rough. But I'm willing to do it, even if we end up having to trade him. So, yeah, there we go. We might have overspent a little bit, but I didn't want to dick around with negotiations. Let's just get it over and done with. Scouting-wise, of course, we have the one problem where we're just having to be very selective with who we're scouting. And to be honest, we can just go from the big board pretty much and just take a look. It's probably how I'm going to handle the rest of this. It's just scroll down, see who we haven't uh, scouted out yet, and take it from there. Just because we know with those extra scouts, we've had a little bit of bad luck in terms of being able to save up on points. So... We'll do what we can <clears throat> throughout the rest of the time that we have to scout. So we're down to 7-3 against the 7-3 Lions. We still have a three-game lead in the division, so we're looking good. But that was not the ideal way to start off this episode. Let's hope we can bounce back here. We have a nine overall point advantage on the Lions, yet we have the same record. So I don't really know what to expect. I mean, we beat the Patriots in the last game of the previous episode, we start off this episode with the loss to the Jets, where really, I don't know if I want to blame the offense or the defense for that. The defense did relatively well. The Tredavious White turnover, I think we have to blame the offense for that one, really. Hanson Erickson was okay, but that was not the performance we expected to see from Kareem Hunt. And that really does go to show, as they have Keelan Cole, by the way. Uh, that really does, really does go to show that I mean, obviously, so much of our offense is dependent upon Kareem Hunt and whether or not he lives up to you know, his ability, which if he doesn't, it's not that Hanson Erickson and the rest of the team isn't good enough to win, but it certainly puts the pressure on. But regardless, we have to move on from that game against the Jets. We are here in Detroit. They get the opening field goal. We respond. It's 3-all at the end of the first. Let's go through the second. 6-3 to three Detroit. Will it stay that way? 6-all. No late score for them. Why do I feel like they might have missed a field goal at the end there? It's 6-all at halftime. They No, they threw it. Okay, I thought they would have gone for a field goal. Then again, I didn't even notice the yardage right there, but it looked like they were pretty far down. Third quarter. Let's see what happens here. A couple of punts back and forth. 13-6. We get the first touchdown of the game, and we take that lead into the fourth quarter. It ended up being a four-yard touchdown pass to Devontae Adams. And again, pressure's on him as well. For someone that we're paying that you know, that highly, we need to see more out of him. Fourth quarter, let's see what we can do as we will be forced to punt fairly quickly. That's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination, especially because Detroit marches downfield and ties this game. Capped off with an eight-yard touchdown pass to James Washington. Can we respond? Not quite. Daniel Gregory with an interception. And that's going to put the pressure on our defense. Thankfully, they were up for the challenge. Ryan Shazier. God, he's so good. Now, again, we started this series with the official update. There was that conversation of do we use the franchise guys roster update, which wasn't finalized at the time, or do we use the EA update? We used the EA update. Ryan Shazier, of course, hadn't been removed yet. 
real life, his career is over, basically. But he's still in. If he wasn't on our team, he would have been on someone else's. Glad we have him because he is an absolute monster. Let's see here if we can capitalize. Yes, we can. 20 to 13 with 5 10 remaining. A four yard rushing touchdown for Jericho and Kang. Can our defense hold up? The answer is no. Detroit ties it with 118 remaining. A six yard touchdown pass to Keelan Cole. And for a secondary that's as strong as it is, not exactly holding up against Matthew Stafford in the past game. 20 20. 118 remaining, and we are going to overtime as expected. Let's go jump to next play. As Detroit, no, we we will start off with the opening possession. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Can we march downfield to win this game? Start off with a one-yard carry for Nkang, and a 12-yard completion for Kawanjo. Is Kareem Hunt out? That would be a disaster. And Kang Kwanjio and Kang Kwanjio. Devontae Adams, 14 yards. We're marching. Cooper Cup, we're in field goal range at the very least. Seven yards for Nkang. Kareem Hunt might be hurt. Second and three. Erickson throws it away. Big third down. Seven yards for Eberon. Let's check this out. We're on the 11. We have marched all the way downfield. At the very least, we're in field goal range as long as we don't turn this over as somebody jumps. Of course, this game's like, oh, shit. You want to kind of get through this? Hey, Ron Rivera's in Detroit. What the hell? It's like, oh, you want to get through this somewhat quickly? Hey, here's, here's a penalty for you. Enjoy this cutscene. I will. And I will. All right. On the 16, instead, first and 15, like I said, at least we're in field goal range. Can we get the job done, though, and end this game now? Erickson, quick throw to Ebron over the middle. Fortunately, it's not a very uh, solid not a very solid catch. We only pick up a few yards on the play. Patamosi on the tackle. Second and 12. Second and 12. Can we get the job done here? I'd much prefer us to not have to play defense. Erickson hands off to Nkang, who gets shut down immediately. Third and 17. Oh, boy. All right. Well, is there a miracle play here, or are we going to have to rely on this field goal? Erickson, what can you do for us? Drops back. 73 is fighting an invisible man, and Ebron has nowhere to go. We will have to rely on the field goal. The Thanksgiving Day game, by the way. Ron Rivera's pumped. I'm not as excited. Not at all. Let's see what we can do here. I mean, hopefully we don't miss the field goal. And thankfully we didn't. 36-yarder for Elliott. Let's see if the defense can hold on. That is the key here. Can our defense get the job done? Stafford throws it away on first down. Second and 10, Stafford throws it away again. Big third down, 17-yard reception for Keelan Cole. Another first down, 10 yards for Ty Montgomery and Clayton Malone. Oh my God, no. Uh, if I sit here and hype someone up another 10 yards for Cole, Stafford is all over us right now. And now our second string or third string defensive tackle, Denard Buckley, looks to be hurt as well. So one thing that really could have slowed us down was injury trouble, but Matthew Stafford is just dominating our secondary. What is going on, fellas? Nine yard line, six yard rush for Hankton, and that's it. The Detroit Lions take it in overtime. We are held to a field goal. They march downfield, making a mockery of our defense in the process. And we drop two straight games to begin this episode. Yikes. 29-42, uh, 298 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Uh, Kareem Hunt, only five carries. He is indeed hurt. How long is he out for? And Kang had an okay game, all things considered. Receiving-wise, the one touchdown for Devontae Adams. Blocking-wise, there may be an injury, a long-term injury to Brenton Weeks as well. We could be completely fucked here. Can't really sugarcoat that. We have at least four players, I think five, that may be potentially injured here. What the hell? And then again, for Matthew Stafford to just have the game, not to mention a missed field goal, Matthew Stafford threw for almost 400 yards. Our defense is better than that. 
We have a 95 rated defense, and they just got ripped to shreds by Matthew Stafford. And the question is, how roughed up are we heading into this Week 13 game against Cincy? Thankfully, Brenton Weeks appears to be the only one who's out long term. He's out for four weeks. So, I mean, we'll have him back for the playoffs, but Jesus. Yeah, I was just wondering if that was the same request, but this has been a nightmare start for us. What looked to have been very promising, and we're now in a little bit of trouble here. I don't think the division is in trouble necessarily. You'd like to think. As Von Key apparently, uh, did I just, yeah, I declined Von Key. He was looking for too much. Buckley, Simon, we'll worry about these guys at the end of the year. We don't have to worry about that now. Let's go ahead and scout some college players. But damn, this, uh, this uh, optimism <laughs> that I started the episode with, uh, not exactly, not exactly still present. I don't know why I just wasted points on Franklin. Obviously, he wasn't that good. It was a mistake on my part. Uh, running backs will avoid, Jesus Christ, some of these, some of these players are brutal. Just absolutely brutal. And in fairness, I've wasted a decent amount of points here, and that is my fault more than anything. But it's also not looking like the best draft we've ever seen before. So, could be, could be a lot of trading down. So, with Brenton Weeks out, uh, Dawkins will be the starting left tackle. So, that's not... The worst case scenario for us. But we need a bounce back performance here. Down to 7-4. and four. Patriots and Dolphins with four wins each. So we should be fine. But we're talking about better seating for the playoffs. Potentially home field. Monday primetime, 89 rated against a 75 rated team. If we do not snap this little losing streak here, I, I, I don't know what to say or do in terms of how to fix that issue. We shouldn't be struggling like we are to begin with. I don't really see, I mean, maybe Detroit, they're overperforming for their team overall. I don't understand how we lost the Jets, both games on the road, but we return home here and you'd like to, you'd like to think we can win this game. We fucking better. <laughs> Down to 7 and 4 on the season. We need a win here. There's, I mean, we got lucky, too, for the fact that only Brenton Weeks is missing after the ungodly amount of injuries last week. So, this, this could be rough. Let's see how this goes. First quarter here in Buffalo. And the Bengals get off to a decent start. The opening three points of the game and the only points of the first quarter. Through the second, it's now 6 to nothing. Cincy. Can we get on the board? We cannot. We are shut out in the first half by the Bengals. I am very, very concerned about our team right now. Third quarter. There's really nothing to do or to debate or break down. Nine to nothing. We get on a board with a field goal and a quick touchdown after a turnover. Ten nine. Heading into the fourth, but absolutely brutal. So it was a 34-yard field goal for Sturgis. We marched down the field, hit a 46-yarder with Elliott, Tredavious White with a pick, and that led us to, oh my God, a one-yard touchdown for Eric Ebron, but you might have noticed who threw it. Granted, it was on fourth goal, so uh, fourth and goal, so I'm guessing it was a fake because Erickson threw the pass before, unless Erickson ended up getting hurt, which, in fairness, we can check. This, is, this has just been such a crazy turn of events here. Depth chart. Erickson's still in, so it must have been a fake. Still, incredibly weird. Let's see what happens here. Cincy, it's third and four. Can we get the stop? Yes, we can. We need to extend this lead. We need to put up points on this drive. And thankfully, we do. It's only a field goal, but 13-9 to nine with seven and a half to go. It's looking a little bit better. Can the defense show up? Yes, they can. Quick three and out. Actually, it looks like it might have been a, a first down on a big play and then three straight stops. Let's see. Can we get anything going? Yes, we can, and that should do it. 20-9, to a late march down the field, capped off by a six-yard rushing touchdown for Nkang. That should do it. We should be good to go. 20-9 to is your final score. So 20 points in the fourth quarter after, be or in the second half, I wish in the fourth quarter, 20 points in the second half 
after being shut out in the first. We don't allow Case Keenum or the Bengals offense touchdown here is what I'm concerned about. We only threw the ball 18 times. 9 of 18 with 90 yards. Josh Allen came in and threw a touchdown pass. Rushing-wise, Kareem Hunt back to his normal self and Kang with a touchdown on three carries. Our offense has stalled out in this episode, and that offensive line, Jesus Christ, Deion Dawkins. Deion, buddy, that is not good enough. Gardner Johnson led the way defensively. Four sacks that game. Thank God Malone wasn't hurt, although Tredavious White might be hurt after he had that pretty crucial interception earlier on in the game. So yet again, we're flirting with disaster in terms of injuries, and we'll see what's happened out of this as Walter Harvey has an upgrade point to spend. So just make him better as a run stopper, again, with it being a scheme fit. But I don't know how to feel right now. Our team isn't exactly playing the most inspired game. Uh, We, of course, lost our first two games of the episode, and we're also, as I mentioned, flirting with disaster in terms of injuries. As we'll move on, week 14, we go to Lambeau. And how are we on the injury front? Mike Hilton's back. Okay, so thankfully, again, we have some players roughed up. Thankfully, no one's out long term. Angelo Riley also improves. Let's make him better as a run stopper. I think next year we turn the left outside back, uh, left outside linebacker spot to Angelo Riley. More than likely, I don't think Tremaine Edmonds is uh, long for this team, at least not in a starting role. He'd be one hell of a depth option, but developing Angelo Riley or perhaps trading him to get somebody better for the role. I'm going to go ahead and scout out these running backs too. Why the hell not? This draft, it might just be about, you know, screw getting the, you know, the best for, you know, screw drafting for role, for need. We just need to get the best players possible, especially when this class looks as rough as it does. Ogletree's looking all right, but... Yeah, this, this might not be the best draft class we've ever seen. That is for sure. So, Mike Hilton's going to be back. Let's take a look at the depth chart before getting into this game. We have four games left. We're going to finish up the regular season in this episode. So, uh, Hanson Erickson's still going to be our starter. A little bit disappointed we haven't had any more upgrade points for him. Of course, that's good to go. Wide receiver-wise, we're good to go. Of course, trying to develop Keiston Savage, but he hasn't up, you know, he hasn't really developed this season at all. Which is pretty shocking. So what we're gonna do actually is put Grant Stemke. Whoops, okay. Or I, I tried to deselect the player and it booted me back. I'm gonna put Grant Stemke on the left hand side, Erickson's blind side, as opposed to Dawkins, because Dawkins just got ripped apart. So let's put Conley as the starter. And right tackle. We'll put Dawkins there. So, Stemke out for Dawkins with Tate and Conley. And then left tackle. Oh, boy. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Stemke. Thank you. Conley and then the backup right tackle, Dalton Tate. So, that's sorted. And defensively, of course, we still got Kiaho. A little bit disappointed in his lack of development this season as well. And needless to say, Clayton Malone's being moved to that to that first spot. I mean, he's a beast, just a beast. If anything, I should probably just go auto reorder right now, just in case. But I think that was the one major change. And then, yeah, the corner situation. Again, we still have, just have such a dominant core. But prior to that game against the Bengals, which, again, we should have dominated, and by the end we did, but... We should be that much better. Now, we're playing an 8-4 and four Packers team. This is going to go a long way. We have a 9 overall point advantage. Another featured game, Sunday primetime. The game knows. The game knows that we're a team to watch. It's just whether or not we live up to our potential. And the good thing is here, I think after this game, hopefully I remember to see if we can afford the extra XP for quarterbacks to try and get Erickson to be that much better and hopefully develop that much more quickly. But like I said, Calvin Benjamin, oh boy. Like I said, there's not a whole hell of a lot to say or to do. Bryce Love and Calvin Benjamin. 
Oh boy, you know, never mind. There's a lot to say. There's a lot to talk about. It's Devontae Adams against Kelvin Benjamin and Bryce Love. That's what this game is. And despite how good of a spot this team is in, despite how well Drico and Kang's been as the backup, and no doubt, we needed to get rid of Kelvin Benjamin. <clears throat> Overpaid and declining compared to Devontae Adams. But that, that decision could come back to haunt me here. As Green Bay walks away with a field goal on the opening drive, we bounce back with one of our own right at the end of the quarter. We don't need to see how long of a field goal it was. Let's get to halftime. It's three all. Green Bay strikes with a field goal of their own. We counter with a touchdown. And 10 to 6 will hold as the score as we get to halftime. So it ended up being a one yard rushing touchdown for Jerico and Kang, who continues to get a lot of carries. And I'm very, very worried about Kareem Hunt's health. As we start the third quarter, Green Bay marches down the field. It's 13 10. Make it 16 10 as we go into the fourth. And we get the offense going. Green Bay makes it 24-10. I didn't even notice that they started in the red zone. We need to score quickly, and thankfully we do. 24-17 with 11 and a half to go. A very quick drive capped off by a four-yard completion to Devontae Adams. Quite a few penalties on that drive where we started off on our own 25, so that was quite helpful. Let's see if the defense can hold up. A turnover would be that much better, and they do hold up. Townsend forced a punt. 9.52 remaining. We start off at our own three, though. Can we get anything going? Somehow we did, but a couple of penalties stalls out the drive. Green Bay takes over at their own 38 with 7.23 remaining. Can the defense show up again? Yes, they do. My God. Can the offense get it going? We desperately need them to. This is it. This is it. This is the drive where we either get back into this game or it's over. As in Kang and Ebron. Now Kawangio, three straight positive yardage plays. Make it four. Ten-yard reception for Cooper Cup. Erickson throws it away on first down. Second and ten. Penalty against Al Bradshaw. Brings up a first down. 25 yards for Kawangio. We're on the 17. 13-yard completion for Ebron. First and goal from the four. Touchdowns. Rico and Kang runs it in. We have ourselves a tie game with 2.23 to go. That was a crucial drive from Hanson Erickson and the boys. The question is, can our defense show up as Calvin Benjamin starts off that drive? 22 yards, back-to-back -back, apparently. 22-yard completions, 9 yards. We, we gave Aaron Rodgers the ball with too much time left, didn't we? Third and one. Oh, my God, the defense holds on. The defense holds on, and they run it on fourth down and get the first. Oh my god, are they in field goal range? Oh my god, are you kidding me that we're going to lose on a fourth down conversion? Cody Parkey. They go for it on fourth down at the midfield line. Or just in midfield in general. I, I can't believe what just happened, I'm sorry. I, I can't make sense of this. They go for it on fourth down. They get it. Get a couple of players together. Kick the winning field goal as time expires. What do you want me to say to that? We lose again. I just... I'm so worried about this team. We are limping. Limping towards the playoffs. And the only reason right now that we're even going to make it is that our division is so weak. We are underperforming to such an unbelievable extent. Like, it's mind-boggling how we are underperforming to this level. It's disgusting, really. 8-5, and five, from 7-2 and two to 8-5. and five. Just what a brutal run, and please don't tell me that's Kareem Hunt. It's not. It's Jonathan Allen. So it's a good thing we have Clayton Malone because Jonathan Allen is done for the season. Out nine weeks. Yeah, he's done. Heading into week, technically, yeah, it'll be eight weeks in week 50. Yeah, he's done. So in what was probably his last season here anyway, Jonathan Allen... His, uh, his, year ends, his year ends prematurely. 
fuck. And just nothing is going our way. Like, I'm not going to celebrate because we beat a weaker team in Cincy. Like, that's not even worth celebrating over. Like, that should happen. We should have beaten the Bengals. And we barely did it. It certainly wasn't in convincing fashion. And now I get to look at guys like probably Jackson. Either Jackson or Fowler Jr. Probably Jackson will be the new um, 2DT, essentially. Let's take a look. Who's the higher rated? Kiaho's an 80. Jackson's a 78 by default. Yeah, so Joe Jackson is going to be moved over to defensive tackle. And we'll sign, unless there's somebody half decent on the free agent list, which I don't believe is the case. And we'll sign one of the higher rated left ends or right ends just to fill that role on the defensive line. Josh Sweat or Sean Egbo. Or Lorenzo Leonard, but in fairness. Practice squad, and again, I have practice squad stealing set to off right now. Uh, yeah, I guess it'll be uh, it'll be Josh Sweat that we sign for the rest of the year. Jesus, we just cannot catch a break right now, and I'm very, very concerned <laughs> over what's going to happen to this team down the stretch. So Sweat, we're going to move. Oh, actually, in fairness. We're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna move Malcolm Morell. Actually, we're gonna. Yeah, nah. We're gonna lose. We're gonna move Lucas Knott over to right end. Granted, I don't have to do this, but I am gonna auto reorder the depth chart, so I want to make sure everything's the way I need it to be. So sweat's fine there, and then Jackson. We're gonna move over to defensive tackle. And again, thankfully, Clayton Malone has developed the way he has that. That is a huge bit of pressure off of our shoulders that he has developed into a phenomenal player. So let's go back over to the depth chart. We'll sort this out, and then I'll check McDermott. So let's just auto reorder now. So again, running back wise, we're fine. Fullback wise is what it is. I still really, yeah, I'm gonna have Savage ahead of on key. Defensive or a tight end, we're good. And then we're fine. We got Brommel there still. So I still say I'm going to run Stemke at, uh, I'm going to run Stemke at left tackle. So let's move Connolly there. Go over to right. Have Dawkins be there for Stemke and Connolly there. So that works. That works, and we'll play Stemke on the blind side just with him being better. Hopefully, that proves to work out for us. And everything else is pretty much set. Left end, Kiaho, Worrell, and Sweat. Right end, Fowler Jr., not in Sweat. That's perfect. Defensive tackle, Malone, Jackson, and Buckley. All right. I think we're looking, looking pretty good. Still... Just super concerned about us underperforming in any way. But everything is set up pretty much as I'd want it. Uh, Reynolds is still... You know, Reynolds isn't bad, but we're going to... Yeah, we're going to move... We're going to move Keaston Savage over. I know Reynolds isn't that bad, but we need Key and uh, Savage to hopefully develop. Granted, Vaughn Key is going to be gone after this year, but still. Third down back, Kareem Hunt, all that's fine. I trust the I trust the auto reorder on that front. So we are uh, we are good to go. Before we get to our week 15 matchup, we host the Browns. Let's check out McDermott. Does he have the extra points necessary? Yes, he does. So we will get the quarterback training boost, which is going to be crucial for us and can hopefully be the difference maker into getting Hanson Erickson to develop into the player that we need him to be. Uh, and in terms of upgrades, I don't think we had any. Yeah, okay, that already counted from the past week. So let's go ahead and advance. A couple of roster changes, a pretty big injury defensively. Brenton Weeks is cleared. He won't play until next week, though. There's no way we're risking him. And in terms of scouting, let's take a look at who is left. Again, this is 
pretty much the best way to handle it, in my opinion. <laughs> Just because every you know everyone else is looking quite weak. So let's take a look at uh, even quarterback Prince Stevenson. Might be worth taking later on, or not. Might very well not be worth taking later on. Absolutely brutal. Same uh, with James Painter. This is going to be a very... Very interesting draft, I would say. I feel like that's the best way to label it at this point. Interesting. Might be the best way. So, with that said, let's get back to it. 8-5 and five Browns against the 8-5 and five Bills. And again, we're underperforming. We have an 11 overall point advantage, but we have the same record this season. It's not good enough. It's just flat out not good enough. Hopefully, we can finally start to get back a little bit of momentum. And it really, it does make you wonder. Of course, makes you question the sim engine a little bit and how results are determined. And granted, any given Sunday and all that, it's all well and good. The old cliches, say what you want. But if we lose this game, like if we lose this game... If we stumble into the playoffs, continue to stumble into the playoffs like we have, I just don't really know what else to do. Like, we have stacked the odds into our favor to such a heavy extent. Like, we have built a hell of a team here. But it all comes down to whether or not they can get it done on the field. First quarter here in the snow. Snowy Buffalo. Gotta love that lake effect snow. Scoreless first quarter. Go to halftime. Can we get on the board? Yes, we can. 7 to nothing. Will that hold up? Yes, it will. 7 to nothing at halftime. Again, low scoring. It was a one-yard touchdown pass to Eric Ebron. Let's go through the third. No real controversy yet. Let's see. Although it looks like we turned it over and they scored. We answer back with a touchdown of our own. It's 14 to 7. So it was a missed 40 or a missed 54 yarder for Jake Elliott, excuse me. They follow up with a five yard touchdown pass to Jarvis Landry. We answer back with a quick drive and a 28 yard rushing touchdown for Kareem Hunt. We start off with possession on our own 44. Can we get anything going? No, we cannot. Actually, yes, we can. In fairness, I completely missed that. I didn't think we'd kick a 56 yarder. We did. Elliott hits it 17 7. I didn't think we'd risk it as Shazier with an interception. Absolute monster. Points here would put this game out of reach 24-7. There we go. There we go. A three-yard rushing touchdown for Jericho and Kang. That should be the game in theory. Cleveland marches down the field only to get shut down. Clayton Malone, the big play on fourth down. That is game barring a drastic collapse. There we go. 24 to 7. Trading wins and losses. We defend home turf though against Cleveland. All the more reason as to why I'm panicking that we might not have home field. Hanson Erickson was brutal. 13 of 28, 141 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Uh, Kareem Hunt bailed us out. He did fumble in that game, but Hunt bailed us out and Kang was solid. Not a great game receiving wise. The O line was phenomenal. And defensively, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the way, Clayton Malone, the only sack, two picks, Mike Hilton and Shazier. And then Jake Elliott might have missed a field goal, but he hit one that mattered, helped continue that bit of uh, momentum down the stretch in the second half. And we do beat Cleveland again as we should. As Stemke and Kareem Hunt improve, as if we needed Kareem Hunt to be any better. He's playing with a 94 with the confidence boost, so imagine how good he's going to be now. It's ridiculous. Uh, stiff arm could be improved, elusiveness could be improved, or we could make him better as a receiving option, which again, he's already been great. Hmm. Again, making him, again, the, the weakest grade, stiff arm, elusiveness, and receiving wise. I gotta be honest. I think again, I'm just, I'm gonna ease, I'm He's so good receiving-wise already, and he's so involved that making him even better, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make him even better as a receiving back. Hopefully we get some good improvements. He's up to a 95. There we go. Catching elusiveness, medium route, short route, and spin move. Perfect. Perfect. Could not have asked for any better attribute boost. Uh, this Grant Stemke. 
make you better as a pass protector. Of course, mainly a right tackle for us. I think he's played pretty much every position. He's one of the guys that we've had for a while, and apparently Lucas Knott also improves. Make him better as a power rusher. Obviously, the offensive line, it's been a carousel in terms of who's joined the team out of the draft and who fits best where. So uh, the fact that Grant Stempke, though, still improved is promising. We have two games left in the regular season. We host, and actually it's a hell of a home uh, home stand down the stretch. We beat Cleveland last week. We host Minnesota this week and then Miami to end the season. It is confirmed. We are playoff bound. After that win last week, we have won the division title. We still are tied for the fifth best record in the league. So that's not too bad. We actually are tied for the second best record in the AFC. So if we can win these final two games, we should be okay. The AFC is not a strong conference this year by any stretch of the imagination. There's an outside chance we could catch Kansas City. That's very unlikely. Our best bet here, though, is to win out and make sure we stay ahead of Houston, uh, the Raiders, you know, Cleveland as well, Jacksonville, even at 7-7, seven and seven, might still be a threat. So we need to make sure that we continue to get the job done, win out, and secure home field advantage to the best of our ability at this point in time. So, again, I hate to handle scouting this way, but it, it pretty much doesn't even matter at this point just for... Oh, just for the way things are set up. So, Malcolm Cox. Yeah, I'm not going to waste points on you, I guess. Started wasting points on some running backs and quarterbacks, but again, that was just because we've had so many weaker options here. It's ridiculous. So, Holloman. Yeah, didn't even want to waste the last point. Devon. Would that be Devon? That's not. Like, that's, that's, no. What are you even doing? What are you even doing? Demarcus Grady. Make him a little bit... uh, Oh, boy. I was going to say, make him a little bit better. I wish. (laughs) Still a lot of people to scout out in the third round. Again, I don't know what to expect in this upcoming draft. We'll see. We shall see. As Brenton Weeks is back, so we are going to go make sure that Grant Stemke is in. As a matter of fact, really, just reorganizing the depth chart and changing the kicking situation, we should be fine. Or the kick return situation. Everything else is good. So, go ahead and put Keaston Savage up top there. Again, to try and develop him as best we can. Reynolds isn't bad, but it's that lack of speed for Reynolds that concerns me. So let's do this. The penultimate game of the season. Our starting left tackle is back. We host the Minnesota Vikings. We have a 12 overall point advantage. Can we make the most of it? We have been very solid at home for the most part. Hasn't always been a walk in the park, but we seem to at least get results, which is promising. We'll see, though, if that continues again. Last two games of the season take place here, and in fairness, it was the last three, but we play Minnesota, we play Miami next week, we're battling for seeding, for the better positioning, for home field in the playoffs. Odds are Kansas City will walk away with us. We're going up against a hell of a quarterback in Russell Summers here, but we'll see how this goes. All we can do is wait it out, see what happens playing in the snow yet again. Let's see what happens as Minnesota marches down the field and gets an opening touchdown. They follow that up with a field goal. 10-0 through the second. Let's see. 13-0. 13-3 and a late touchdown off off a turnover. That is that is crucial for us. They missed an 18-yard field goal. Jesus. And we got the ball back and they picked it off and then hit a 41-yarder. Go figure. Well, we bounce back, though, 38-yarder for Elliott. There's a quick three and out, and a quick drive down the field, eight-yard touchdown pass to Cooper Cup. So it actually wasn't a turnover. 13-10 at halftime in favor of the Vikings. Let's see what we can do here now. 16-10, and a late field goal makes it 16-13 as we enter the fourth quarter. As we start things off with the bang, Ryan Shazier. We start off on the 12, 
Is that the point swing we needed? It is 20 to 16. Very nice. Very nice. We end the third quarter with a 50 yard Jake Elliott field goal, and we begin with a five, or we begin the fourth with a five yard rushing touchdown for Jericho and Kang. 20 to 16. We still have a long way to go, as we were forced, or we did force them the punt. It's promising. Let's see what we can do here. Unfortunately, we're forced to punt right back. So, 10 minutes remaining. Still up by four. Minnesota's drive is stopped around the 45. We take over at our own 14 with 7.41 remaining. And Antoine Carroll intercepts it. They start on the 22. We're in a lot of trouble. Can our defense hold on? That is a crucial turnover. Russell Summers hasn't exactly been lights out, as I maybe expected him to be. Third and five here. And we're going to hold them to a field goal unless they go for it. And they went for it and succeeded. Our fourth down our fourth down defense, not great. Fourth down conversion leads to a touchdown and a three-point lead for the Vikings with 5.23 remaining in regulation. We do start off the follow-up drive, though, with a 23-yard completion to Adams. Six yards to Eric Ebron. Eight yards for Eric Ebron. We're marching downfield here. And we need to 19 yards for Kawangio. With three and a half to go, five yards for Nkang. We're looking good. Touchdown here would be ideal. Can we complete it third and one? Nkang gets the first down. Come on. Three yards for Nkang. Let's go. Please, another three yards. Jesus, unless it replayed the same thing. Second and goal from the three. Please. For the love of all that is good, just, just do this. And Kang can't break through. I feel like whenever we watch it, it goes poorly. <laughs> Third and goal. Are we going to settle for the field goal? Let's find out. Erickson over the middle. Drico and Kang touchdown, Bills. Oh, thank God. Drico and Kang. Not sure again why he's out there over Kareem Hunt, but I don't care. A fourth down conversion for the Vikings leads to a touchdown, but we are able to march downfield, capped off by that touchdown reception for the running back, Jericho and Kang. You look at the threat we have coming out of the backfield with Kareem Hunt and Jericho and Kang. Shit. All right. Can our defense hold on is the question. 27-23 with a minute and a half to go. Can Summers complete one hell of a drive? Let's find out. Nine-yard completion for Adam Humphreys. It's not going to be out here. Change of possession. There we go. Thrown away. Big third down coming. They have all three timeouts. 24 yards for Adam Thielen. 12 yards for Humphreys. Are they going to run out of time? Final play of the game. Ball on the 30. Three seconds remaining. This is it. I feel like they didn't use their timeouts that well. Here we go. Summers, quick throw. Falls into the back of the end zone. The Buffalo Bills, hold on. We outlast the Vikings. It didn't look all that promising when they completed that fourth down conversion and went on to score the touchdown, but we were able to bounce back. Hanson Erickson. 24 of 38, 273 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. He is struggling down the stretch. Kareem Hunt, only seven carries, and Kang did all right. Not really. He was pretty poor. Again, I don't know what's going on with Kareem Hunt and if he's actually hurt or banged up. Devontae Adams, 100 yards receiving. Of course, the receptions for Kang and Cup leading the way. Offensive line really struggled. Defensively, White and Shazier led the way. We only got the quarterback once. It was Lucas Knott. Shazier with that big-time interception. Elliott was two for two. At the end of the day, we walk away with the victory, but we do walk away with some doubts, some concerns over injuries primarily. We do have some upgrade points, though. So, Kawangio. Leilon Kawangio. I kind of regret not having Keaston Savage set up as our kick returner all season, especially when he pretty much immediately gets points. So, that's that's unfortunate. It's not the biggest deal in the world. He's not someone that has a tremendous amount of upside. Just mainly, you know, could have made the kick return group even better. But we have had no luck 
in terms of a kick return threat throughout the entirety of this series. As Savage is actually going to be out for six weeks. So there we go. We make him the kick returner and he gets hurt. Sweet. Probably make him better as a short route option. Although in fairness with that speed, I mean, we just need to make him better in general. And he only has normal development. So that's, that's unlikely. Let's make him better as a possession threat. Improve the hands. But he is done for the season. So, <sighs> I don't really know. I don't really know here, man, with the amount of injuries. It's going to be him that we're going to be shutting down for the rest of the year. Dislocated elbow. Yeah, he's done. So we'll go ahead and sign somebody else off of the free agent list. of two players on the IR here down the stretch. Not ideal in any way. But let's see who we can bring in to replace him. And unfortunately, the answer is going to be pretty much nobody. Let's look for someone with a decent amount of speed. It's probably my best bet. Uh, Darren Elgin, who we had before, if I'm not mistaken. And in fairness, might be the best option. It's him or Antonio Callaway. Just in terms of that speed. Elgin, Callaway, or Jason Clay. Let's look at the kick return ratings here. Kick return... 81, 82, 84. Let's go for Jason Clay. We'll bring him in for now. Not exact. Well, in fairness, he's a 62. I don't really know how much the kick return rating necessarily matters. Galloway is a 71. Fuck it. We'll bring him in. At least he's a more he's a more well-rounded option, just in case worse comes to worse, and we need to actually somewhat rely on him at a certain moment. But let's go ahead. In advance to week 17 against the Dolphins. I do have to say, I'm not sure if we'll get to like a season recap stat-wise this episode. Might save it for the next episode and the inevitable postseason matchup just because of, uh, yeah, time. We're almost to an hour this episode. So I think we'll probably just sim this game. We'll take a look at the stats in the next episode and get to the playoffs, which hopefully it's a deep playoff run. No guarantees, of course. If it is, I mean, as I always say, we will end up simming as far as we make it. And perhaps by taking a look, perhaps by taking a look at the stats in the next episode, we'll be able to hold off on free agency in the draft and have that be in uh, one episode itself. So we'll figure that out. We still have one game to go here. We do need to set up. I'm very... Yeah, we, we're, we're going to change this up here. Let me take a look at the standings because we are fighting for seeding, but we might want to try to protect some of our starters. Let's see. AFC. Okay, so we can't get the top record, but if we lose, it becomes a shit show. So a win here would, yeah, we need we need to make sure that we win. As much as I love the rest starters, it doesn't make sense. We need to make sure that we win to try and secure that higher seeding. So uh, let's just go back, make sure the kick return setup and everything is good to go. And then we'll go for it. Week 17, we'll see what we can do. So uh, let's make Key the ideal guy. And we'll also bump up Callaway. Oh my god, the freaking like, skip ahead. So Key and Callaway will be the one-two punch. For kick and punt return. And we'll see what we can do here. Like I said, we need a win just to secure ourselves better standing in the postseason playing the 5 and 10 Dolphins. We have a 12 overall point advantage as we complete this homestand to end of the year. Sean McDermott, I hope to have the same kind of half smile on my face at the end of the game as you did there. Good old Vaughn Miller, of course, got that massive offer from the Dolphins. We were we were intrigued. I was intrigued to send an offer. And then, of course, we looked and it's like, oh, that's that's not going to happen. It is flat out not going to happen. What's up with the text, by the way? You see the space between Kareem Hunt? What's up with that? As opposed to Alex Collins, who has normal text. That's just happening for everybody on our team. It's some sort of sign, I'm sure. Week 17. Let's do this. In the snow, yet again, nothing but snow. 
in Buffalo. Here we go. First quarter, we do start off with the opening 14 points as Miami's not able to get anything going. It looked like they were close to scoring and then failed. So we end up getting an interception, Tremaine Edmonds. That leads to an 11-yard touchdown pass for Ebron. We then get a 63-yard rushing touchdown for Kareem Hunt. That leads to an interception for Ryan Shazier at the 12. Jesus, a so 14-0 and a couple of picks already. Let's see how the second quarter goes for us. 21-0. Make it 24-27-7 at the half. This is the type of game that we needed to get the confidence up there heading into the playoffs. A 13-yard touchdown reception for Devontae Adams. A 45-yard field goal for Elliott. Clayton Malone recovers a fumble. That leads to a 48-yard field goal for Elliott. They do get a 6-yard touchdown pass. Glenn Herman gets them on the board. 27-7 here. And as we begin the sim through the third quarter, make it 34-7. Is that how it will hold up? 41-7. So you know what? We may have been struggling. We may have dealt with some injuries, but this is the type of game that we needed. Just a blowout victory heading into the playoffs. 49 yards for Cooper Cup. Looking damn good. As I'm actually going to change out. As Kareem Hunt ends up uh, getting a touchdown as well. I'm going to change out the starters here. Let's go ahead. Go to the depth chart. Change out the starters. The menu lag is out of control. We'll bring in the reserves. We've done our job. We know that we are uh, going to be the second seed. So let's go ahead and do what we have to do to reserve our chances at success. So you know what? Even the uh, even the offensive line, I'm going to make changes. Conley's coming in. Genther's coming in. Foster's. So it, it's going to be a rough 15 minutes for Josh Allen. But I'm doing what I got to do just to make sure that we, that we pull this off here. So... Go ahead and have not. Potter will get to play. Riley and Harvey. Should put Ripkowski in more ideal roles. There we go. Trying to get these guys playing. Shazier will move down as well. Whoops. Suppose it doesn't really matter, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's rest our starters, shall we? Uh, could we not technically? If we go back over, could I not technically? Play Pete for Lattimore. I can. Good. All right. And then Turner for White. Smith for Hilton. And then at safety, let's go ahead and play Pyle. And let's go ahead and play Simon. There we go. So pretty much resting everybody down the stretch. I am just going to go ahead and quickly sim through the fourth quarter. But 41 to 7 with 15 minutes to go. Uh, we'll see. How our reserves can do. They do give up a touchdown. Uh, they give up another touchdown. 41-21 your final. Again, the offense as expected. Couldn't exactly get anything going. But the job was done. We end up make, you know, we end up taking the division title. We end up sealing our spot as the second seed in the AFC. Rest our starters to hopefully avoid any sort of disaster. Uh, although I hope it didn't put anybody back in. Because Josh Allen only had two attempts. And in fairness, no, we, we know, because Reynolds got five carries, as did McCray. Okay, so it definitely played some of the backup options. Kareem Hunt had a great game here, final week of the season. Three touchdown passes for Hanson Erickson. Receiving-wise, we did quite well. Eric Ebron over 100 yards with a touchdown. Cup and Adams with touchdown passes as well. Or touchdown reception, touchdown passes would be phenomenal. Only two sacks allowed, no sacks allowed by any of the reserves. Shazier with 12 tackles, got to the quarterback only once. The interceptions for Shazier and Edmonds, very crucial for us. And then the two field goals for Jake Elliott, 41-21, your final. And barring any injury, any unforeseen injury that we you know didn't know about, which describes unforeseen, <laughs> barring any unforeseen injury, we escaped Week 17 in perfect fashion. Uh, Ebron, I'm going to make better as a blocking option, to be honest just to try and make him a little bit more well-rounded. And you know what? That that was worth it to me. A lot of upgrade points there. He's 29 years old. It's not like making him that much better at anything he was already good at was going to be helpful. Might as well help him be a little bit better blocking-wise. You know what? Screw it. Let's take a look at the stats here. As we already know, 
We are good to go. So let's advance week. Who are we playing? If anybody in the wild card, hopefully not. Good. We avoid the wild card. Thank God. That was the that was the key. And I, I knew that, but I'm just like, wait a minute. <laughs> you never know. Something crazy could have happened. So holy upgrade points. All right. Yeah, we're definitely going to, we need to celebrate here. Clayton Malone with two points, by the way. How can we make him better? Power moves, finesse moves. Okay, so we'll do one in the power moves and one in the speed. <laughs> Works for me. So one point better. Oh my god. So he's an 87 playing like an 88 right now because of confidence. Dude, this this kid. He's 22. Superstar development. When did we draft him? Like, when did this happen? Because Clayton Malone is going to be one of the stars of this series. This is unbelievable. He was the 21st overall pick in 2021. Oh my god. Like, what a monster he has turned into. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Power moves or finesse moves as well would be great for him. Uh, and again, just zone coverage. So, let's make him better. Actually, in terms of pass coverage, he's already pretty good. He's already pretty good. It's just power moves and finesse moves are never going to be really that good. I think because he's already a 78 in zone coverage. But you know what? I want to make him better. I want to make him better. I know he's an 84. He's an 89 overall now. I know he was an 84. Let's bump him up to an 85 in terms of pass coverage. So we have a couple of superstars on the team. Oh, shit, he had two points? I thought he only had one. Okay, it's glitched. Jake Elliott, let's make you a little bit more accurate. Up to an 88 overall. The team that we have, man. Ends up going up uh, two points in awareness. The team that we have is just unbelievable. Malone, let's make you better as a speed rusher. So he stays at an 87, which is fine. Gets three points to finesse moves and one point to power. Beautiful. Can't believe that guy. Sherrard Reynolds, let's make you better fucking in any way. Break tackle, trucking, stiff arm. All right, so that's his big thing. He needs to be better as a power back. So he's not that bad. Yeah, we'll try to bump him up a little bit. Ends up getting break tackle and trucking. I'll take that, especially as a potential kick returner. And our fullback, Jamon McCray. We'll make him better in a blocking sense. That gets him up to a 75. He's a 76 with confidence. A shitload of points there. Not too shabby. A ton of upgrades to end the year. Let's take a look at yearly awards, shall we? As Deshaun Watson wins league MVP. Russell Summers was second. We had Kareem Hunt in seventh. The disrespect is out of control. Coach of the year went to David Wells in Seattle. We finished fifth. So, not too bad. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through the NFC, just for anybody who wants to know. You can look at this, of course, in your own time. We'll do the individual breakdown, though, in the AFC, with that being a little bit more relevant to what we're doing here. So, for those who wanted to know, there you go. So, in the AFC, Watson finishes first for Offensive Player of the Year. Kareem Hunt finishes second. So, again, the disrespected MVP voting. Is out of control. Defensive player of the year is Ryan Shazier, which, I mean, my God, I can't wait to see how many interceptions he had total. Uh, he also had Char uh, Charlie God uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Your name's not Charlie, buddy. You finished in sixth. Well done. Offensive rookie of the year went to Wilcox. We didn't have anybody up there. Defensive rookie of the year, Kiaho, finished in fifth. Jack Ryan was up there as the winner. Best quarterback. Erickson finished 10th. Okay, best running back, Kareem Hunt. Not much of a surprise there. Best wide receiver, this is where it's disappointing. Not a single guy in the top 10. Very disappointing. Best offensive line, we had Bush up there. Finishing in 7th, and Brenton Weeks as well. So that's a nice change of pace to have some nominees for best offensive line. Best defensive line, Clayton Malone finished 6th. Dante Fowler Jr. in 8th. Best linebacker, Shazier. Of course, no surprise. Best defensive back, Tredavious White in fifth. Lattimore in eighth. Best kicker went to Jake Elliott. And that is that. So not a bad season for us in terms of awards. Let's take a look here at everything before we get into what the playoffs are going to be. So again, we looked at the yearly awards. It's all well and good. So let's see what we have here. In terms of the league's best offense, we were uh, mid-table. Not too bad. Passing yards, just under 3,500. So we had the third fewest passing yards this season. 
Very disappointing for Erickson. Rushing yards, though, we had the best rushing game in the league to counteract that. Averaged 28 points a game, which was top five in the league. 26 passing touchdowns, which is obviously towards the bottom. Rushing touchdowns, though, a phenomenal 25. Tied with the Rams for the league's best. The fewest was Tampa with only four. Absolutely brutal. Defensively, total yards allowed. We allowed the fifth most yards defensively. It does not make sense with a 95-rated defense. We allowed 4,800 passing yards. So we have the worst passing defense in the league. We cannot stop the ball in the air. It doesn't make sense. Rushing yards allowed, we allowed the third fewest. So we just cannot stop the ball in the air. Points allowed, though, crucially, third fewest. So bend, don't break is the real deal. We had 38 sacks, so we were relatively up there. Fumble recoveries, up there with six. And interceptions, we had 18, the league's most, which isn't surprising, especially considering some of those would have been crucial. Also took 52 penalties, the league's least amount. So there you go. Not really all that surprising that we still struggle to stop the pass. Hanson Erickson, 3,500 yards, just about 303 completions, 25 touchdowns, 10 picks. Average yards of 217 a game, 61% completion, 91.5 rating. I think that kind of speaks for itself. Rushing-wise, Kareem Hunt over 1,700 yards, 17 touchdowns, only one fumble. Absolutely ridiculous. And Jericho and Kang, 423 yards. Not bad, seven touchdowns. Erickson with a rushing touchdown as well. Receiving-wise, in terms of receptions, it was Kwanju with 71, Adams with 70, Ibrahim was up there as well, and then guys like Cooper Cup and Kareem Hunt, everyone else was just kind of a rarity. Receiving-wise, yardage-wise, Devontae Adams led the way with 851 yards. Touchdowns, the leader was Kwanju with 7, Adams and Cup at 5, Ibrahim with 4, Hunt with 3. That was actually in Kang's first receiving touchdown of the year. Blocking-wise, nobody in double digits in terms of sacks allowed, weeks allowed. Nine, he also missed some time, so it's not saying much. He probably would have been double digits. Uh, Shazier, 136 total tackles. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson also over 100 on the year. In terms of quarterback sacks, Fowler Jr. led the way with 10 even. Interceptions, it was Shazier with five, White with four, Lattimore with three. Pretty damn good. And then Jake Elliott, 27 of 31 field goal-wise on the season. And then Rigoberto Sanchez, uh, quite, quite the weapon for us that we desperately needed. And again, no kick returns for touchdowns. And apparently, uh, kick return stats are just broken. Apparently. Just outright broken. But all right. That is that. So with that, as this season comes to an end... Let's take a look here. I don't really think there's too much else to change. Again, we're an 89-rated team. You could talk about maybe changing up our schemes, which right now, again, it's just sets that we have the majority of our players under a scheme fit for the sake of getting the most boosts. And, you know, I mean, certainly to say, oh, I don't think that affects it, I think that's incorrect. Considering we're running the 4-6, you look at how dominant we are at stopping the run, but how bad we struggle against stopping the pass. So we could change this up to anything. I'm not worried now about, not necessarily worried now about player development. I'm worried about what schemes will get us into the best spot possible. So make sure to uh, leave any feedback or suggestions on that topic down in the comments below. And I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's take a look around the league here. If I missed anything, let me know as well. The playoff schedule in the wild card, it's Cleveland and Houston, Philadelphia, Green Bay, Oakland, Cincy, L.A., and Dallas. Let's see how it goes down. Let's see who we will be playing in the divisional round in the next episode. Who's it going to be? Houston. The rematch against Houston will take place in the next episode. Two years ago, they booted us in the wild card. This year, they booted Cleveland. As Philly ended up beating Green Bay, Cincy beat Oakland, and the Cowboys beat the Rams. So in the divisional round, it's Cincy, Kansas City, Philadelphia, Seattle, Houston, Buffalo, Dallas, and Atlanta. Again, next episode, we sim through the playoffs. No matter how far we go, 
whether it be three games or one. We'll see how it goes. Again, if I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. And for now, I thank you for watching. You know the deal. Support the video, support the channel. Thank you guys for your continued support with the series. I'm still having fun with it. For those of you that have stuck with it alongside me, glad you're still here. I'll see you guys in the next round. The Bills are back in the playoffs, but are we destined for another playoff disappointment?